Question. The nurse is to administer subcutaneous heparin to elderly adults. What facts should the nurse maintain when administering this dose? Select all that apply. 1. It should be administered in the anterior area of the iliac crest. 2. Use a 27G, 5 eighths 1.6 cm, needle. 3. Cephalosporin potentiates the effects of heparin. 4. Double check the dose with another nurse. 5. The onset is rapid. Answer. Option 1, 2, 3, and 4 are correct. Elderly adults may have little subcutaneous tissue, so the area around the anterior iliac crest is a suitable site for these clients. The nurse should use a 27G, 5 eighths, 1.6 cm, needle. Cephalosporin and penicillin potentiate the effects of heparin. Two nurses should check the dose because a dose error could cause bleeding. The onset of heparin is not rapid when given subcutaneously. Question. The health care provider evaluates that the client correctly understands how to report signs and symptoms of bleeding when the client makes the following statements. 1. Piteki are large, red skin bruises. 2. Purpura is an open cut on the skin. 3. Echimosis are large, purple skin bruises. 4. Abrasions are small pinpoint red dots on the skin. Answer. Option 3 is correct. Large, purplish skin lesions caused by hemorrhage are called ecchymosis. Small, flat, red pinpoint lesions are petechi. Numerous petechi result in a reddish, bruised appearance called purpura. An abrasion is a wound caused by scraping. Question. A physician prescribes 0.5 mg of protamin sulfate for a client who shows signs of bleeding after receiving a 100-unit dose of heparin. The nurse should expect the effects of the protamin sulfate to be noted in which of the following time frames. 1 5 minutes. 2 20 minutes. 3 30 minutes. 4 10 minutes. Answer. Option 2 is correct. A dose of 0.5 mg of protamin sulfate reverses a 100-unit dose of heparin within 20 minutes. The nurse should administer protamin sulfate by IV push slowly to avoid adverse effects such as dyspnea, hypotension, bradycardia, and anaphylaxis. Question. The client with idiopathic, thrombocytopenic purpura questions the nurse about why it is necessary to take steroids. Which is the nurse's best response? 1. Steroids kill the antibodies and prolong the life of platelets. 2. Steroids alter the spleen's recognition of platelets and increase the life of platelets. 3. Steroids neutralize the antigens and prolong the life of platelets. 4. Steroids increase phagocytosis and increase the life of platelets. Answer. Option 4 is correct. Idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is treated with steroids to suppress the splenic macrophages from phagocytizing the antibody-coated platelets, which are recognized as foreign bodies, so the platelets live longer. The steroids also suppress the binding of the autoimmune antibody to the platelet surface. Steroids do not destroy the antibodies on the platelets, neutralize antigens, or increase phagocytosis. Question. A client's bone marrow report shows normal, stem cells and precursors of platelets, megacaryocytes, in the presence of reduced circulating platelets. The nurse identifies a knowledge deficit when the client makes, which of the following statements. 1. I need to stop flossing and throw away my hard toothbrush. 2. Now I know why I have all these bruises. 3. I shouldn't jump off that last step anymore. 4. I am happy that my report turned out normal. Answer. Option 4 is correct. The client who states that the test results are normal has only heard that the bone marrow is functioning. The etiology is in the destruction of circulating platelets. Further tests must be achieved to determine the cause, e.g., a coating of the platelets with antibodies that are seen as foreign bodies. The bone marrow result does rule out other potential diagnoses such as anemia, leukemia, or myeloproliferative disorders that involve bone marrow depression. The client needs to stop flossing and throw away his hard toothbrush, which can lead to bleeding of the gums. The destruction of the circulating platelets accounts for the easy bruising and the need to protect oneself from further. The client should not jump or increase exertion of joints, 
which may lead to bleeding in the joints and joint pain. Question. The nurse should advise the client with a platelet count of less than 150,000 slash mu L to avoid which of the following activities? 1. Ambulation. 2. Stay with the children. 3. Belsalva's maneuver. 4. Semi Fowler's position. Answer. Option 3 is correct. When the platelet count is less than 150,000 slash, mu L prolonged bleeding can occur from trauma, injury, or straining such as with Valsalva's maneuver. Clients should avoid any activity that causes straining to evacuate the bowel. Clients can ambulate, but pointed or sharp surfaces should be padded. Clients can visit with their families, but should avoid any scratches, bumps, or scrapes. Clients can sit in a semi-fowler's position, but should change positions to promote circulation and check for PTECI. Question. A client taking acetylsalicylic acid caplates develops prolonged bleeding from a superficial skin injury on the forearm. The nurse should tell the client to do which of the following first? 1. Apply an ice pack for 20 minutes. 2. Place the forearm under a running stream of lukewarm water. 3. Pat the injury with a dry washcloth. 4. Wrap the entire forearm from the wrist to the elbow. Answer. Option 1 is correct. Aspirin has an antiplatelet effect and bleeding time can be prolonged. Intermittent use of ice packs to the site may stop the bleeding. Ice causes blood vessels to vasoconstrict. Using lukewarm water, patting the injury, and wrapping the entire forearm do not stimulate vasoconstriction to stop bleeding. Question. The nurse should advise the client with a platelet count of 31,000 slash mu L2. 1. Pad sharp surfaces to avoid minor trauma when walking. 2. Maintain the room darkened. 3. Assess for spontaneous PTECI in the extremities. 4. Check for blood in the urine. Answer. Option 1 is correct. A client with a platelet count of 30,000 to 50,000 slash mu L is susceptible to bruising with minor trauma. Padding areas that the client might bump, scratch, or hit may help prevent minor trauma. A platelet count of 15,000 to 30,000 slash mu L may result in spontaneous PTECI and bruising, especially on the extremities. Padding measures would still be used, but the focus would be assessing for new spontaneous PTECI. Maintaining the room dark does not help the client with a low platelet count. With a count below 20,000 slash mu L, the client is at risk for spontaneous bleeding from the mucous membranes and intracranial bleeding. Question. A client with a history of systemic lupus, erythematosus was admitted with a severe viral respiratory tract infection and diffuse PTECI. Based on these data, it is essential that the nurse further evaluate the client's recent. One. Quality and quantity of food intake. 2. Weakness, fatigue, and ability to get around. 3. Length and amount of menstrual flow. 4. Type and amount of fluid intake. Answer. Option 3 is correct. A recent viral infection in a female client between the ages of 20 and 30 with a history of systemic lupus, erythematosus, and insidious onset of diffuse PTECI are hallmarks of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. It is essential to ask whether the client's recent menses have been lengthened or are heavier. Her ability to clot can help determine her risk of increased bleeding tendency until a platelet count is drawn. PTECI are not caused by inadequate nutrition. Because of poor food and fluid intake or weakness and fatigue, the client may have gotten bruises from falling or bumping into things, but not PTECI. Question. When a client with thrombocytopenia has an excruciating headache, the nurse analyzes that this may indicate which of the following? 1. Sinus congestion. 2. Stress of the disease. 3. Cerebral bleeding. 4. Migraine headache. Answer. Option 3 is correct. When the platelet count is very low, red blood cells leak out of the blood vessels and into the tissue. If the blood pressure is elevated and the platelet count falls to less than 15,000 per mu L, internal bleeding in the brain can occur. An excruciating headache occurs from meningeal irritation when blood leaks out of the cerebral vasculature. When a client has thrombocytopenia, 
the nurse should constantly assess for cerebral bleeding by checking vital signs and neurologic checks. Headaches can be caused by stress, migraines, and sinus congestion. However, the concern is the risk of internal bleeding into the brain. Question. The nurse should assess a client with thrombocytopenia who has developed a hemorrhage for which of the following? 1. Decreased PSCO2. 2. Narrowed pulse pressure. 3. Tachycardia. 4. Bradycardia. Answer. Option 3 is correct. The nurse observes tachycardia in the hemorrhaging client because the heart beats faster to compensate for decreased circulating volume and reduced numbers of oxygen-carrying red blood cells. The degree of cardiopulmonary distress and anemia will be related to the amount of bleeding and the period over which it occurred. Bradycardia is a late symptom of bleeding, it occurs after the client can no longer compromise and is debilitating further into shock. If bradycardia is left untreated, the client will die from cardiovascular collapse. Decreased PSCO2 is a late symptom of bleeding after oxygen transport to the tissue has been affected. A narrowed pulse pressure is not an early sign of bleeding. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and watch playlist for more videos.